Hello everyone, this video covers section 18.3 This will be probably the last video of the, the semester The point of this video is to derive the Black-Scholes equation which should not be confused with the Black-Scholes formula which they are related and you'll see the connection at the end of the video Remember that we are now in the continuous uh, continuous model time. Uh, in the discrete time, we also have uh, two accounts. We have the bank account and the stack. But obviously, the equations are this one is still the same, but this one is very very different. So this is the bank account, which is the risk free account and then uh, you have the risky account which is the stack and uh, remember the the stack price follows a geometric Brownian motion that was s was equals to s0 e to the mu t plus sigma uh, the winner process and remember this was under the market probability and this formula was slightly different if we were using the martingale uh, probability measure the main difference is that in continuous times we're dealing with a uh, continuous time we're dealing with differential equations so this is a regular first order differential equation and this is a stochastic differential equation so this is a ODE and this is a stochastic differential equation. Remember that this is equivalent to saying that Bt, the amount on the bank, is equals to the initial amount e to the rt, where r is the interest rate. Recall also from the past that we have the following portfolio: um, phi of t and psi of t, which is technically uh, phi depends on t which is time and also in the value of the stack at time t and the same is true for for psi where phi of t was equals to the amount of stack um, held by the writer at time t and t and psi of t was equal to the amount in the bank held by the writer at time t and here by amount obviously we're talking about money and remember the assumption that we have followed the whole semester is that this has to be f uh, FT adaptive which pretty much means you cannot look in the future you can only uh, find the stack price based on the information you have up to today so that's what the adapt adaptive means therefore the the value of the portfolio is given by this formula so this is the value of the portfolio at time t where remember the b of zero was equals to the to the price now we're gonna denote the value of the portfolio at time t so by definition we're gonna call this equals to lowercase b of t s of t and it's very important that you do not confuse this capital B with this one, which in essence they are the same, but you have to keep track on when we're using this and when we're using this. Also, uh, don't forget that the strategy has to be self-financing, which means you can uh, put money in or take money out out of the system. 
remember in the discrete case, which we did this before, the value of the portfolio, if we went to the next step, which was from n to n plus 1, the value of the portfolio was still phi t, but the value of the stack will have been changed by that amount, plus you still will have phi of t, which is the amount on the bank, but this is going to be changed by whatever interest rate you have, which is this. Therefore, in discrete time, the differential, and by differential we mean the difference between the the value of the portfolio, this will still be phi of t, it will be s of t plus delta t minus s of t plus uh, psi of t times um, b of t plus delta t minus b of t everything divided by v of t. Remember that this one is not a uh, random, this is uh, deterministic. Again, this is in the discrete world, but now we're in the continuous world. So in the continuous, to get to the continuous, all you have to do is we let delta t go to, to zero. So therefore, instead of the, differ the differential in discrete time, we will get this. So this equation will become dB is equals to phi of t dS plus psi of t dB uh, over b or b of t. Now, since uh, db, uh, sorry, since ds is equals to all of this, if we substitute this in here, then the db is going to simplify to phi t times mu s dt plus sigma s dw plus psi of t dB over dt, which is just equals to a phi of t times mu s dt plus sigma s times phi of t dW plus and this will be phi of t r dt. How do we get the r dt? Remember that from here we have the db is equals to r db dt. So this implies also the db over b of t equals to r dt. So that's how we get the this part right here. Which you can simplify a little bit further. There is no need to we already know which functions depend on t. So technically you can write this as uh, phi mu s plus psi r dt plus sigma s phi dw. Now we're going to focus on the European option okay. that will have a payoff function f of x and um, the maturity is going to be t as before so this is the same notation from before so again what we want is the with the price which we're going to call it now y so this will be the price 
and one of the prices equals to capital B of zero, which will be the same thing as lowercase b of zero, s of zero. And we wanna make sure that when we get to the maturity time, the b of t is equals to lowercase b of t, s of t, which should be equals to the payoff function at that time. So in essence, this is what we this is what we want to solve based on these conditions. Now, before I go to the next page, uh, I'm gonna call this one equation star. And notice we did this the, a few minutes ago. The capital B is defined to be this. So the next step is we're gonna use Ito's formula on this equation only on lowercase b. So we're going to apply Ito's formula to a lowercase b of t s of t. So then the formula should be d or lowercase b should be equals to the partial derivative with respect to t dt plus the partial derivative lowercase b with respect to x uh, ds plus one half the second derivative with respect to x. Remember here s is technically the stack price or yeah the stack price at time t times uh, ds square which is equals to this the partial of with respect to x ds remember this is given to you this was equals to mu s dt plus sigma s dw plus one half second derivative respect to x okay. and uh, if you square this remember that dt times dt is equals to zero so the only thing that's going to survive is the dw square which becomes dt remember that dw times dw was equals to dt and dt times dw was equals to zero so the only thing that will survive it's going to be this term square, which will give you s square, s square dt. So if you factor the dt, this will give you the partial or lowercase b with respect to t plus the lower um, case b with respect to, to x times mu s plus one half the second derivative uh, with respect to x of b times sigma square s square all of this is dt plus the partial of b with respect to x times sigma s dw and I'm gonna call this equation double star. Remember the capital B of T is supposed to be equals by definition to lower case of B of T S of T. So therefore the derivative or differential or the stochastic differential equation has to be the same for this one and this one. So this one uh, was star, and this is double star, which which is found right now. Remember that a star was the following: dv capital dv was equals to psi r plus uh, phi mu s the whole thing dt plus uh, phi 
sigma s v w. Therefore, if we compare star with double star, this implies right away the phi of t, which remember is phi depends on t and s of t, has to be equal to the partial of v with respect to x of t and s of t. So pretty much at this, which is equals to, to this. So that implies that b should be equals to that part. I mean, phi should be equals to that part. Also, that means that this is to equals to all of this. Therefore, this implies the the partial of b with respect to t plus sigma square over 2 a square times the second derivative with respect to x square has to be equals to psi of t s of t times r and this should be true for t less than equals less than. Notice that since phi is equals to dB dx, this term will cancel with this one. Okay, so this will cancel with that one. That's how we get this equation. Also notice that by the definition we have right now the b capital b of t was equals to uh, phi of t s of t plus psi of t so therefore this implies the psi of t is equals to b minus phi times s but remember b is the same thing as lowercase b of t of s so it will be minus the partial of b respect to x of t s times s so this s this equals to this s and remember the phi was equals to to this phi of t was this so that's how we get this part right here therefore if we substitute this uh, this value for psi in here so we literally plug this in here so we're gonna substitute this in here so in here we'll get that this equation now becomes the partial of v with respect to t plus sigma squared over 2 a square partial of v x square will be equals to r a lowercase b minus r s the partial lowercase v with respect to x which if you set it equals to zero you get the following equation db <coughs> excuse me dt plus sigma square over 2 x square the partial of b lowercase b with respect to x square plus rx lowercase db dx minus r b lowercase b equals to zero again this is true for less t less than equals to t and here the terminal condition is that when we get to the final time or the exercise time that this should equals to the payoff function and this should be true for x greater than zero now this is what is called the famous uh, black Scholes equation. 
This is actually a partial differential equation, and uh, we don't expect you to solve this at all. There is a whole area of math just dedicated to this type of equations. But there is something very interesting about this equation. This equation is actually deterministic. This means that if you can solve this equation, you can find the option price. So in essence, and this is a big, big deal, like a huge deal for in this area. And by being deterministic, that means that it eliminates. Okay, so that means this eliminates the randomness. So there will be no more randomness in option pricing. So this is a huge thing. Again, remember for this to be true, and actually, even though this equation is very complicated, the assumptions are still pretty simple. Remember the main assumption the whole whole semester was the there was no arbitrage opportunity on this. That the uh, portfolio was self financing. There was no transaction costs and so forth. And more importantly, the the stock price followed the geometric uh, Brownian motion. Like I just say to solve the previous uh, differential uh, partial differential equation is actually pretty pretty tricky, but if we uh, focus on the European option only, then remember the price of the European uh, option is going to be this. So this is going to be the price of the European option. An American option is a different different story, but for the European option, this will be the, the price. In fact, the solution to the PDF, the solution to the previous uh, partial differential equation, which again was the Black-Scholes uh, equation, now formula by the Black-Scholes equation, is actually the, the fair price. And by fair price, remember we meant this. This was the fair price. In particular, if we have the European call option, where f of x is equals to x minus k plus, and we covered this before. Then the solution to the partial differential equation is the following, which uh, you've seen this formula before. So this is not new. You've seen this at least once before. So this is in fact the solution, which uh, the solution to this differential equation, partial differential equation. Where a capital fee is the normal distribution function, the community distribution function for the normal distribution, which you can find using just a table or a calculator. So again, this is the exact same formula we did before. And as you can see, if you let the value for lowercase to be zero, this will give you the, the fair price. This just becomes capital T, which is the maturity time, maturity time, and so forth. And there is a very similar formula for the put option. And you don't have a formula like this for the American options. Finally, there is something called uh, the Greeks. 
and they're called Greeks because we're going to use Greek letters. This is also called sensitivities. Sensitivities. The Greeks are usually used as a hedging strategy. So you're going to try to hedge uh, the future. The first uh, Greek that we care about is the delta, which is technically, by definition, is going to be the partial derivative of b, lowercase b, with respect to x. So this will be the, the delta, and this is very easy to find, because this is pretty much just v of t. And this one measures. So this is pretty much the ratio of the change in the price of the options or change in price of the option. And the change in the price of the stock. The other uh, Greeks include uh, gamma, which is the second derivative of the option price with respect to the stock price. Then you also have theta, which is the ratio of the change in the stock price with respect to time. You have rho, which is the price, the change of the stack uh, or the option price with respect to the interest rate, and then you have beta, which is not really a Greek but still part of this. It is the change in the option price with respect to the volatility. Now, the only one you uh, have to worry about for the test is technically delta, which is very easy to find. And also because that's my dog's name, but this is the only one you have to worry about. You know, in practice, in real life, um, traders rely uh, a lot in this, these Greeks to decide whether to buy or sell or any financial decision these are very very important finally notice how the uh, black scholes equation can be written in terms of the of the greeks so the black scholes equation can also be written in terms of these greeks this is what i mean this will be of theta theta of t plus sigma square over 2 x square gamma of t plus rx delta t minus rv equals to 0. And that's it.